The Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, welcomes you to the Alternatives Public Information Meeting for the U.S. 1792 Project Development and Environment Study in Osceola County, Florida. Financial Project ID Number 437-200-1 We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by October 22, 2021, 10 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. This public meeting is being recorded. This presentation is posted on the project webpage. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return to project staff. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Responses will be provided via email after the meeting. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at cflroads.com slash project slash 437-200-1. You may also email your comments and questions to the project manager directly to lorena.cusack at dot.state Dot fl dot us. You may mail written comments and questions to Project Manager Lorena Kusek, FDOT, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720. You may also call the Project Manager at 386-943-5392 to provide verbal comments following the public meeting. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720 by phone at 386-943-5367 or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator by mail at 605 Sewanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4753, or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. This public meeting was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's Public Notices website, in the Osceola News Gazette, and El Osceola Star Newspapers, and on the project webpage. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, and elected and appointed officials and government agencies were also notified about this public meeting. The Environmental Review, Consultation, and Other Actions Required by Applicable Federal Environmental Laws for this project 
are being or have been carried out by the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, pursuant to Title 23, USC Section 327, and a Memorandum of Understanding dated December 14, 2016, and executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. FDOT is currently evaluating alternatives to widen U.S. 1792 from the current two-lane roadway to a four-lane divided roadway from Ivy Miss Lane to Avenue A in Osceola County. This project is located between two ongoing projects. The project west of Ivy Miss Lane is the Point Sienna Parkway extension being completed by Central Florida Expressway Authority, or CFX. The Ponciana Parkway extension, currently in design and planned to go in construction in 2022, will include a diverging diamond interchange with US 1792 just southwest of Ivy Miss Lane. The project east of Avenue A is the U.S. 1792 widening project, which is widening from two to four lanes from Avenue A to Ham Brown Road. The U.S. 1792 widening project is currently under construction and anticipated to be completed in spring of 2022. Also adjacent to this project is the County Road 532 widening from Old Lake Wilson Road to U.S. 1792. The County Road 532 widening project is currently in design and anticipated to be completed by summer of 2022. A Project Development and Environment Study, or PD&D study, determines the location and conceptual design of the preferred roadway improvements and the associated social, economic, and environmental effects of the improvement. A PD&D study has three main components, an engineering analysis, which includes defining and evaluating alternatives, including a no-build alternative, environmental evaluations, which evaluate potential impacts to the social, cultural, and physical environments, and a public involvement component to inform and involve all interested parties in the development of the planned transportation project and to seek public input. This process is mandated by the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, and Florida law. It represents a combined effort by technical professionals who analyze information and document the best alternative for a community's transportation needs. The project development process consists of five steps, including long-range planning to identify the project need, PD&D study, project design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction. The PD&D study is the second phase of the project development process, where an engineering and environmentally feasible alternative that meets the community's transportation needs is determined. The location and conceptual design of improvements are identified, and environmental and social impacts are assessed. The purpose of this project is to satisfy future travel demand needs and improve safety conditions for this regionally significant arterial roadway. The need for the project is based on projected traffic expected to exceed capacity for the existing two-lane roadway and the current lack of pedestrian and bicycle accommodations along the entire study corridor. This project is consistent with Osceola County's comprehensive plan to provide a multimodal facility by 2040 and is included in Metroplan Orlando's State Highway System list as priority number four. The maximum volume a two-lane roadway can service is 18,585 vehicles per day. Both the existing traffic, with 28,000 average vehicles per day, and the no-build 2045 projected 37,500 average vehicles per day along U.S. 1792 exceed the two-lane roadway max service volume. 
This project is considering widening U.S. 1792 from two to four lanes from Ivy Miss Lane to Avenue A. There are several alternatives that are identified for this project. However, the proposed typical sections will be consistent between all alternatives. The difference in alternatives is within the alignment of the roadway. Therefore, these alternatives will be called alignment alternatives. The alignment alternatives will be identified in two segments. The western segment from Ivy Miss Lane to just east of the Muslim Cemetery of Central Florida consists of several connections and constraints, including a connection to the Point Siena Parkway extension, a connection to County Road 532, a new and existing bridge over Reedy Creek, avoidance of Fletcher Park, a connection to Old Tampa Highway, and avoidance of the Muslim Cemetery of Central Florida. Due to these constraints and connections, only one alignment will be evaluated, which will consist of the best fit alignment to minimize impacts along the western segment. The eastern segment from just east of the Muslim Cemetery of Central Florida to Avenue A will provide three alignment alternatives, each alternative alignment shifts the widening to the north, south, or centered along the existing roadway. The detailed concept layouts for each alignment alternative are shown on the public meetings displays and are available on the project website. There are four typical sections that will be applied along the study corridor. Each of the typical sections and their segments are common among the three alignment alternatives. Typical Section 1 consists of two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction, with flush outside and inside shoulders, and divided by a raised 22-foot median. A 12-foot shared use path will be provided along the north side of the roadway, and a 6-foot sidewalk will be provided on the south. In this typical section, the roadside ditches are between the roadway and sidewalk or shared use path to provide separation from the roadway traffic. The total right-of-way required for this typical section is 230 feet wide. Typical Section 1 applies to the study corridor from Ivy Miss Lane to the Reedy Creek Bridge, from Old Tampa Highway to Intercession City, and from Intercession City to Avenue A. It will have a speed limit of 55 miles per hour. Typical Section 2 applies to the study corridor along the Reedy Creek Bridge. For this section, the existing Reedy Creek Bridge will be restriped to provide two 12-foot travel lanes for the eastbound traffic. The new bridge will be constructed north of the existing bridge to provide two 12-foot travel lanes for the westbound traffic and will include a 12-foot shared use path separated from the roadway traffic by a physical barrier. The width of the new Reedy Creek Bridge will be approximately 56 feet wide. The speed limit for this typical section will be 55 miles per hour. Typical Section 3 applies to the steady corridor between Reedy Creek Bridge and Old Tampa Highway and consists of two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction, with 4-foot inside paved shoulders and 7-foot outside paved shoulders. The roadway will include curb and gutter and a 22-foot raised median. A 12-foot shared use path will be provided along the north side of the roadway and a 6-foot sidewalk along the south side. The total right-of-way required for this typical section is approximately 195 feet wide. The speed limit for this typical section will be 55 miles per hour. This smaller section will help minimize impacts to homes and environmentally sensitive areas, as well as facilitate the new alignment of Old Tampa Highway into U.S. 1792. Typical Section 4 applies to study corridor within Intercession City and consists of two 11-foot travel lanes in each direction with curb and gutter and a 22-foot raised median. A 12-foot shared use path will be provided along the north side of the roadway 
and a six-foot sidewalk along the south side. The total right-of-way for this typical section is approximately 112 feet wide. The speed limit for this typical section will be 35 miles per hour. As part of this project, community enhancements within Intercession City are being considered that provide protected pedestrian crossings and speed management practices. Potential pedestrian crossing treatments include the use of a rectangular rapid flashing beacon, also known as RRFB, or the use of a pedestrian hybrid beacon, also known as PHB. Potential improvements that encourage speed management include narrower travel lanes, landscaping, speed feedback signs, and speed limit pavement markings. These strategies will be considered as the project moves forward. We are evaluating several improvement alternatives for the intersections of Osceola Polk Line Road, Old Tampa Highway, and Avenue A. Intersection concepts include signalization, roundabouts, and other alternatives. Additional information regarding the various intersection concepts being considered are provided on the public meeting displays and are available on the project website. Four drainage basins have been identified for the corridor. Drainage ponds are needed to accommodate and treat additional stormwater runoff. Several pond locations are being considered. However, only one pond will be selected for each drainage basin. Floodplain compensation areas are also being considered to mitigate floodplain impacts anticipated from the project. An offset compensation area is also being evaluated on the southeast side of Intercession City. Coordination with adjacent projects is ongoing to determine the potential for joint-use pond locations. Environmental features are also being evaluated to determine if the roadway widening results in significant impacts to the natural, social, cultural, or physical environments. These design concepts, along with the no-build alternative, were evaluated and the results are shown in the evaluation matrix. There are many similarities between the three alternatives. The primary differences are within the potential right-of-way impacts and associated right-of-way acquisition costs. The number of parcels potentially impacted is highest for Alternative 1, with 106 parcels, compared with Alternatives 2 and 3, with 80 and 79 parcels, respectively. Additionally, the number of potential relocations is highest for Alternative 1, with a potential for 36 relocations, compared with 24 potential relocations for Alternative 2, and 27 potential relocations for Alternative 3. The estimated right-of-way cost is $92.2 million for Alternative 1, $80.1 million for Alternative 2, and $82 million for Alternative 3. Please review the detailed evaluation matrix provided on public meeting display and available on the project website. We began this PD&D study in July of 2020, and we expect it to be completed in the summer of 2023. The public hearing is anticipated to be held early spring of 2023. To follow the status of the project, please visit the project page on the FDOT Central Florida website www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 437200-1 in the search box at the top right corner of the page. Then click on Go. The recording of this presentation and all materials shown here tonight are currently available on the website. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by October 22, 2021, 
10 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. This public meeting is being recorded. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you may speak to your project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Responses will be provided via email after the meeting. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com slash 437-200-1. You may also email your comments and questions to the project manager directly to lorena.cusack at dot.state.fl.us. You may mail written comments and questions to the project manager, Lorena Kusek, FDOT, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5392 to provide verbal comments following the public meeting. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by October 22, 2021. Contact information a recording of this public meeting, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the project meeting will be posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com. Please remember to type the project number 437-200-1 into the search box and then click Go. Have a good evening.